Okay, so this is another problem where we have the two logs. So I do need to combine these first. And when I do that though, here you have a minus sign, which means I need to take the first argument and put it over the second argument. Then since this is a log base four, I'm gonna take the exponential base four and apply it on both sides. And then these will cancel, leaving me with x squared minus 144 over x plus 12. And four to the one power is just four. And then how do we solve equations of fractions? You multiply by the common denominator. So I get x squared minus 144 equal to 4x plus 48. And this is a quadratic, so I will have to get it equal to zero. So I get x squared minus 4x, negative 144 minus 48 is negative 192. And then if I do my quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. So negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 192 is 784. Is there a square root of 784? Oh nice, there is. So we get 4 plus or minus 28. So we get two answers, 4 plus 28 over 2 and 4 minus 28 over 2. This one is 32 over 2, which is 16. And this one is negative 24 over 2, which is negative 12. So we have two answers to check. Now we have to check them in the original. So if I plug 16 in here, I'm going to get 16 squared uh, minus 144. That's positive, so it's good. And 16 plus 12 would be 28, and that's positive. So the 16 works. Now let's try negative 12. So negative 12 squared minus 144. That gives me zero. You can't have the log of zero. It has to be positive. Zero is not positive. Zero doesn't have a sign at all, okay? And also if you plug in negative 12 here, you're also gonna get zero. Look what happens when I try to take the log of zero. It tells me error, okay? So your argument cannot be zero. It has to be specifically greater than zero. So this one is a bad answer. So I only have one solution here, which is 16. Now we have another problem, okay? So I do need to combine the two LNs together. And because it's a subtraction, it means I'm going to have this um, expression over this expression. And this one's pretty complicated here. So first let's get rid of the ln. Remember that a ln is base e. So that means if I wanna get rid of the ln, I have to use the exponential base e. So I'll have this and this. So this e and log e are going to cancel, this e and log e are going to cancel, and I have this. And then look, I already have a base e and a base e next to each other, so those are going to cancel. And how do you solve an equation that has a fraction? You multiply by the common denominator. So I get x equals 5x minus 4. If I minus 5x on both sides, I get negative 4x equals negative 4. If I take that equation and I divide both sides by negative 4, I get x equals 1. Okay. Now we have to check to make sure that that's going to work in both of the arguments. So here, if I plug in 1 minus 4, notice I'm going to get negative 3, which means it doesn't work. I've done all the math correctly, but this is a bad answer. When it's your only answer and it's bad, then what you say is you say there's no solution. 
And that hadn't happened to us yet, but it did happen in this problem. So keep in mind that if you've got to go back and check your answers. If they give you positive um, arguments, fantastic, they work. That's a solution. If it gives you zero or a negative argument, that does not work, okay? And if all of your solutions don't work, then you have to say that there's no solution. And so this is just um, kind of a summary on how to do it. But normally for us, we're, all we're doing is um, applying the opposite operation, okay? So we're not converting form to form anything like that we're just applying the opposite operation to each problem and then we're getting the solutions that way and we just have to make sure that we our results our answers result in positive arguments and positive bases okay they cannot be zero and they cannot be negative now we're going to take that information on how to solve logarithmic equations exponential and logarithmic equations. And we're gonna come back to some applications, okay? So we've done some applications with interest, compound interest, but the only variables that we solved for previously were um, A, P, and R, okay? But now with the information that we have, we can solve for N and we can even solve for T, okay? So let's see what we need to do in this problem. It says, how much money will there be in an account at the end of eight years, so my time is eight years, if $1,000 is deposited, so my P is $1,000, at 5% interest, so my rate is 5%, which is the same as 0 0.05, and compounded quarterly, which means my N is four. Quarterly means four times a year. Assume no withdrawals are made and then use this formula. So this one's nice because all I'm doing is plugging in numbers and then I can type it in my calculator and get the answer. So let's see what we get there. Um, 1000 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.05 over 4, go to the side, raised to the 4 times 8. And so then I get, and it's money, so it's 1488.13. That one's not too bad. That one's actually like something that we've done before. They're just kind of bringing it back so you make sure that you still can do that. Um, but now things are going to get a little bit different. So this one says find the interest rate. So I don't know what R is. Um, and it wants me to round to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So it wants me to produce this if $1,500 is left at interest compounded quarterly. So if it wants me to make this, it wants my deposit to produce that, that's actually the amount afterward. And then this is what I'm putting in the bank and I'm leaving it at a certain interest rate, compounded a certain number of times. So that's my investment. And then compounded quarterly means N is going to be four, there are four quarters in a dollar, right? And then for 3.5 years, which means my time is gonna be 3.5. And again, it wants me to use that formula and it's reminding me again to round to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So let's plug everybody in. We've got 2,000, 1,500 for P, one plus R for rate, four for N, and then NT, so four times 3.5. Now, the only thing I can do here is four times 3.5, which is 14. Now, in order for me to get R by itself, I first have to get this by itself. So I'm gonna divide by 1500 And the calculator reduces that to four thirds. Now I need to get rid of the exponent. So you do the opposite, which is a root. So the 14th root of this
you will get plus or minus because it's an even root, but I'm not gonna put that in the calculator just yet. I will later. This will undo this, giving me one plus r over four. Then the next thing I need to do is subtract one. Um, when you have a plus or minus, and then this it has to go in the front. So 14 and 4 thirds in the inside, r over four. And then finally I have to take this side and multiply it by four and take this side and multiply it by four. So when I do that, this becomes negative four plus or minus four, the 14th root of four thirds equal to r. So I have two things that I have to calculate. I have to calculate negative four plus four, 14th root of this, and then I have to calculate negative four minus and then the 14th root of four over three equal to r. I already know this one's bad because I have a negative number minus another number. That's gonna give me a negative value. I can't have a negative rate if my dollar amount is growing to 2,000. So this one doesn't make any sense. So let's go ahead and calculate what this one will be. So negative four plus four, and then I'm going to say, I'm gonna use a parentheses here to keep these separate. So basically I'm doing this. 14 roots, so notice it put it in a 14 up there, and then four over three. And then get out of there and close that parentheses. And then I'm gonna hit enter, and I get 0 0.08304519. This is a decimal, I need a percent. So if I move this over two times, I get that R equals 8.3045192%. But it told me to round it to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So this is tenths, hundredths. This is not going to change that. So my rate is 8.30%. So that one was a little bit tricky. But that one we've actually done before. So let's now get into something that we haven't done before. They're just putting it all together to make sure that you can kind of keep track of the old ways and then now the new ways. So now this one says find the number of years. That's new. We have not figured out how to find time yet. For this much to grow to that much. So the part that I start with is 7,700. And then what I'm gonna end up with, the amount I end up with is that 112,000 or 11,200. My rate is 8%, which is 0 0.08. Take the decimal here, move it over twice. And then it's compounded semi-annually, which means N equals two. And it says round to the nearest 10th of the year. And notice they don't give me the formula this time. So make sure that I have the formula on your note sheet. A equals P1 plus R over N, and then T times N, or N times T, it doesn't matter up there. So I'm gonna plug in all my numbers. And then T is a T, because I don't know what it is, times two. So I think I can simplify what's inside the parentheses, but that's about it. So one plus 0 0.08 over two, I get 1.04, and then that's just two T. Now I have an exponential. I know how to get, I know how to solve exponential equations. I have to use the logarithms with the same base, but I can't do that until the exponential part is by itself. So I need to get this exponential part alone. How do I do that? I divide by that coefficient on both sides. So 11200 um, divided by 7700. And I'm gonna leave the answers, never use decimals until the very, very end. That is 16 over 11. And then now, in order for me to get rid of an exponential with base 1.04, I have to do a log base 1.04. 
and then a log of 1.04. So then the log 1.04 and the exponential base 1.04 cancel each other out. And I get 2t. And then now, how do I do this? I would have to divide both sides by 2. So I would have to have... Um, let me change this expression into the change of base, right? So I would have ln of 16 over 11 divided by ln of 1.04, but then that whole thing would have to get divided by two. And that's how I'm gonna figure out what t is. So we have to be very careful. I'm gonna hit a fraction for this fraction bar right here. And then in the, I'll just go ahead and put the two at the bottom. In the top, I'm going to have to hit the fraction again to get this fraction. So ln fraction again, 16 over 11, close it. And in the bottom up there, I'm going to have ln of 1.04, and then hit enter. And you get 4.77672923. And it says round it to the nearest tenth of the year. So this is going to be 4.8 years. So it's really weird on entering that in the calculator, but it can be done. You just have to be very careful. And if you make a mistake on entering something in the calculator, if you've got all these steps on how you did everything, and all you did was make a mistake on how you entered it in the calculator, you're going to get most of the credit. You might not get one final credit because you didn't select the correct answer because you put it in the calculator wrong, right? So that's why it's important that you show your work on the review, I mean on the tests, because you might have the right idea, but you made one small tiny error and that's not worth getting the whole problem wrong. So that's why I always try to give back points based on what you have. And then if you're not demonstrating that you're understanding anything, you just kind of guessed at the answer, I don't think it's fair that people get full credit for that kind of stuff either, right? So I do have to balance all of that out when I'm going in and grading afterward. Now, here for this example, we do have three more. So um, I think I'm actually going to stop the video here and then I'll go into these three problems in a part three.